Hello. Hi. Hello. Maybe I can show a view of the audience if people don't mind. Maybe you can see that we, we have a, a large number of audience here. Yeah. This way. Can... Uh, so, uh, Zultan, I can start here. I can share my screen now. Hello? I don't hear you. Okay. So, uh, I think recording is in progress. So, I will uh, start my screen, uh, share my screen. Yes, I will start with the presentation. So, um, can you hear me? Yeah, yes. Okay, so uh, I'm talking from Prince Sultan University in Riyadh, and I am member of College of Humanities and Sciences, uh, Dr. Jamila Bhatt. And this is an, uh, a virtual tour of compact neon solenoid experiment. And compact neon solenoid experiment is a machine where scientists, engineers, and software programmers work together to explore the subatomic world. Uh, let me just show you briefly what is subatomic world. Everybody knows about atoms. They have electrons, protons, and neutrons. But do you know there are smaller things inside neutron and proton? We call them quarks. And this is an artist uh, point of view of how atom looks like. In the center, we have nucleus with neutrons and protons, and these are electrons. If I look inside the proton, these are smaller things we call quarks. And to study this subatomic world, how do we look inside a proton? So if we want to look inside a brick, we just break them, we break things, we smash them together. So if we want to see inside a proton, we smash two protons. So it means we have to uh, throw them at each other and smashing needs acceleration. And this is done by a large Hadron Collider, LHC, in Switzerland. So let me take you to Switzerland. We are there in Riyadh. And this is Switzerland. And if I will uh, zoom in, you will see that this is city of Geneva. And you see a ring here. Actually, this is an underground tunnel. So you cannot see it from Google Map. And it is established under this uh, CERN, which is a European nuclear research organization. Um, so this was established in 1954 and they have made this uh, Large Hadron Collider. So Large Hadron Collider is a very large ring, which is 100 meter underground. And if you will make a straight line from this ring, it will be 27 kilometer long. Uh, there are four experiments or four machines at different places, CMS, Alice, Atlas, and LHCB, and they look at the subatomic particle coming out of the collision of these protons. Uh, so CMS stands for compact neon solenoid. It, you can think of it like a very large microscope. Why microscope? Because it looks at very small things. I mean, in scientific way, we cannot see, say it see, we can say it detects, it detects small radiations or particles coming out of the collision. The purpose of looking at these radiation is to learn the nature and beginning of the universe. And of course, the, they do it by looking at the radiation. So this is CMS experiment, uh, graphical view. And you can see a human standing here. You see how small the human looks. So actually this machine is like five story tall building. And today we will take the tour of this, but before going ahead, uh, so this is the opportunities which CERN offers to our students, students like you who are working in engineering or computer programming, uh, they advertise it every year and you can definitely apply there. So it's, it's a very competitive based jobs. And this event, it cannot be organized with all the sports and guidance from our um, 
University and I want to say special thanks to our uh, honored Dean of College of Humanities and Sciences, Professor Mahmoud Al Mahmoud, and our respected chair, uh, Professor Wasfi Shatnavi, uh, and our organizing committee, especially the head, Professor Budina, and our team members. And another thanks to all the administration who helped us to organize this event, College of Humanities and Sciences, Mathematics and Science Department, and all our colleagues, because they have been very much helpful and guiding throughout this process. And PSU is organizing this event in collaboration with this International Year of Basic Sciences for Sustainable De Development with the help of UNESCO. Before going to tour, I, I would like to invite our um, um, Dean, uh, Honor Dean, Professor Mahmoud Al Mahmoud, if he can say a few words. Uh, thank you very much, Professor. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Um, I came here unprepared to be actually giving the word, welcoming word to all of you, but uh, I'll take this opportunity to welcome all the faculty members. I want to thank the um, Department of Math and Sciences for their efforts. Uh, it's true that I don't know much about physics. I'm a humanities person. I side with the humanities more than the science uh, on this equation. But I think such events are appealing to our students and faculty alike. Uh, the International Year of Basic Sciences, uh, I'm glad that we have a partnership with them. This is one of the series of events that will follow. I thank the organizing committee, uh, First of all, the chair of the Department of Math and Sciences, Professor Wasfi, Associate Chair, Dr. Ham Danum. Thank Professor Budina and his team, Dr. Jamila, uh, Dr. Rasha, did I miss anyone? And of course, Mr. Ihab for this wonderful uh, event. Uh, I also thank the, uh, our dear students who have made it today. I uh, wish you enjoy the event. And I thank also our guests for their contribution. Thank you very much. So let's go to uh, our post in uh, Switzerland at CERN. So I will uh, stop sharing the screen. So Zultan, you can start your. Um, you can start presenting. Thank you very much. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I, okay. I will use my mic. Perfect. Thank you very much for the presentation and thank you everyone for uh, being here today. Uh, what I would like to add uh, to what has been said already is that uh, today uh, we are standing uh, here on site at CMS. Uh, what you see behind me, what you can see behind me is the um, uh, real size poster of uh, the uh, CMS uh, detector. Uh, we are standing uh, on, uh, so now we could stand here because uh, the detector is running and the shaft is closed. But normally where we are standing now is open. And this is where we lower or lift items uh, from uh, the underground, which is again, a hundred meters underground, like we mentioned, like was mentioned. Um, so about CMS, uh, more into details of what CMS is. Uh, it's a bunch of uh, layers of subdetectors that um, are supposed to capture these collisions that were mentioned, the collisions of particles. So when, when we said the, the particles are smashed, it means that they are collided. And um, here, what happens is that more than 1 billion collisions happen uh, uh, per second. And this is a huge amount. And basically what happens after that is that the energy that is produced is supposed to create new particles. And the subdetectors uh, here, the layers of subdetectors, they are like a camera. 
and they capture the, the collisions and then they are supposed to analyze different things. Uh, what I would also like to mention is that we are now in uh, France, on the French site, which is CC, where CMS is, uh, one of the largest experiments here at CERN. Uh, we are a collaboration of more than 5,000 uh, physicists, scientists, researchers, engineers, uh, students, uh, interns, uh, technicians, everyone basically, uh, with uh, more than 50 nationalities and more than 250 institutions collaborating together uh, to discover or uh, let's say uh, reveal what the universe is made of and how the universe started and everything. Um, uh, to, to highlight our presence, uh, as in the MENA region presence at CERN um, in CMS, uh, today I am May from Lebanon, and this is Sarah with me also from Lebanon, and we wanted to um, present to you as two people from Lebanon and uh, just to show you that uh, the MENA region presence is, um, is, is here, we're here. Uh, we are, so the MENA region is represented uh, by many countries, including Lebanon, Algeria, Morocco, Egypt, um, Saudi Arabia. So perhaps what you don't know is that Saudi Arabia signed an international cooperation agreement in 2006 uh, through uh, KACST uh, and also um, a few uh, uh, summer students uh, joined uh, from KAUST um, and uh, what we aim for is to, to actually have more people uh, joining through the different um, opportunities that were showed uh, now in the presentation uh, so that uh, so that people know that there are opportunities and there are different things you can uh, contribute with because uh, there's a there's a conception that perhaps only we do physics here, but uh, as also mentioned in the presentation, we do a lot more than physics. And uh, perhaps I could ask Sara to tell us a bit about what she does at CERN as an intern. Hello, everyone. Thank you, May. Uh, so I'm Sara. I'm from Lebanon, and I'm an undergraduate computer engineering student. I'm doing my internship here at CERN. Uh, as a software developer uh, in the computing team uh, at CMS also. So uh, the project we work at at uh, the computing team is the ICMS tools uh, project where we uh, manage, maintain and uh, develop more features uh, in, uh, as, manage, as a management uh, system for CMS uh, so that uh, everyone at CMS, the secretariat, the managers, uh, the engineers, the physicists can manage things easily. Uh, and uh, personally, I work on the ICMS statistics parts, which uh, uh, in this project, we can collect several data and group them uh, so that we have uh, a statistical overview about CMS. How many members do we have? For example, how many women from a certain region do we have at CMS? Uh, and that's how we can study these data and analyze them in order to uh, also come up with new ideas and uh, new projects, maybe new collaborations at uh, CMS. Uh, so I haven't been here for long. It's only been two months and uh, it's amazing and I'm learning a lot. And this is actually my first visit to the site, to uh, CMS. And uh, it's, uh, it's, really, it's really amazing. Well, well, we could say that, yeah, Sarah, this is her first time here, but unfortunately she can't go uh, to the underground uh, because we are, the detector is running. And actually, while the detector is running, perhaps this is uh, interesting, we have a few hours sometimes to stop the detector and uh, do some maintenance, some, uh, you know, okay, let's, let's fix something or let's uh, do something. And then uh, people have the opportunity to go it, it to the underground, which is, uh, which is great. And when we go underground, we use something called dosimeter. So the dosimeter, the personal dosimeter is what we wear. So I'm wearing one now. And it's supposed to help, uh, it's supposed to measure the um, uh, dose you get exposed to when you are 
underground. And uh, we always, uh, we should always measure the dose, like see, uh, read it. And then there's a dedicated machine to do that. And then um, it's obviously not dangerous to the people. Uh, and anyone who should uh, access the underground will have to uh, also scan their um, iris, the, the, their, uh, the eyes, because it, each dosimeter is specific to like a certain person. And then you scan in order to be admitted down, uh, in the underground. Mm, perhaps um, a fun uh, fact, where I'm standing now, there's the... Um, uh, there's the crane and what i learned is that uh, the crane uh, this crane was used uh, for the very first time uh, uh, to uh, lower uh, so it was it was supposed to uh, it was uh, not this one <laughs> i thought this was a fun fact <laughs> so not this one <laughs> never mind Okay. <laughs> uh, mm, so far, does anyone have any questions? It would be interesting to receive questions and see what you guys think or like what you, what you guys are wondering about. Uh, okay, I can ask question to uh, to the audience. If anybody has question, uh, you can ask anybody. Hello? Yes. 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 Okay, so let me share the screen first so you can also see the speaker. Okay. So, okay, so perhaps I tell you what I do at CMS while we wait. Uh, so, I am an energy engineer. And what I do here is uh, different things, which is, uh, which is great because this is what CMS is about. So, okay, you come as an engineer, but uh, you can work on project management, on safety, you can uh, do visits, you could, you could do many, many things. So what I do here is basically engineering data management. This is how I started. And then I started to work on uh, organizing and preparing a building that is uh, very crucial to CMS, uh, which is the building 904. And that building is actually important because uh, this is where we assemble chambers, the chambers that you could see behind in this, uh, in this poster. Hello. So, oh, we have May. Zach. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, can we can me? hear you. Yeah. So uh, I'm Zakaria Washik. So uh, I work for uh, CMS Safety Office, more in safety uh, uh, system of uh, CMS detectors. We have just here behind uh, behind Noemi the overview of uh, all detectors, which we can see the LHC beam here, and we can see all sub detectors. We have Pixel. I don't know if we can see Pixel there. It's more inside, mm. and ah. Uh, And here you have like an example, HF, the part of HF, the end cap and the barrel here, and also the end cap as well here in the middle and also the barrel here. And in the middle, we have a solenoid part, which is uh, the, the biggest part of, um, of uh, supraconducting solenoid magnet, which is the biggest part of uh, the, the CMS detectors inside of CMS. And the others, it's all uh, muon chamber. That's why we, we call the uh, CMS compact muon solenoids. So here it's uh, how we, we, we will access inside of the, the USCP T5, so the service cavern. We are using the dosimeter in order to to follow uh, the dose uh, inside of uh, radiation area and in order just to also have all trainings and all request access because we cannot exceed uh, uh, in normal condition in this uh, uh, specific facility. So you have many modes, uh, general mode, patrol mode, restricted mode, and now we are in general mode because the access, it's, uh, it's allowed. But you, you can see that during the beams, 
the mode is in closed mode because we don't want to have uh, uh, people inside of uh, 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 experimental cavern. So I will exit inside of the pad, the personal access device, and I will do the, the scan dosimeter with my eyes in order just to, to see if it is possible to go inside or not. Or not. So May, you are still with me, I think. Yes, and yes. Um, I mentioned okay. the dosimeter and how how it's supposed to work, and now you showed it, so it's exactly. perfect. So inside of this area, uh, it is not possible to to take uh, watchers or if people they have a medical implant also they cannot be inside of uh, of the USC fifty five and UXC. Uh, I think uh, right now we are going to come in the lecture that's why the signal is lost. Uh, maybe I can ask uh, Anya, uh, is it Ajun, Anya? We can ask questions. And this is the mat. Uh, we are using uh, this uh, also these uh, doors uh, only for to pass some materials. So this is also possible to also pass all visitors or um, Yes, visitors. And here you have also the camera and also uh, the monitoring of the magnet, uh, which there is a, a magnetic information of uh, the magnetic field if it is works or not. And uh, here, this is inside of the lift. And we will go to minus two. So let's see now uh, the, uh, we will not have a network. So. Uh, I will uh, uh, take you afterwards uh, in a few minutes. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Zach. So meanwhile, uh, Zach and Naomi are going to the underground. And uh, as he showed you, you have to pass your dosimeter, your personal dosimeter, to be able to enter. And he was able to enter because we have a few hours of stop. Uh, so um, I think we're lucky today to actually be able to go that far, perhaps. So we'll see. Um, uh, I don't know if anyone has any questions uh, yet. Yes, I, see, I see some hands. Did you hear? Are you there? Yes. Yes. I I'm sorry, I don't think we got the questions. Uh, I think um so maybe I can rephrase. He's asking uh, how much power is used by CNS. How much power? How, how many? I don't know if I got the question correctly. How many students are there? Power, power, power. How much electricity is used? I mean, I can just answer that there is a special grid in uh, Switzerland. Is reserved for this machine. It uses a lot of power, and sometimes it is provided by Switzerland. Sometimes it is provided by uh, France because they are all sharing this machine. I choose, uh, As for the electricity question, two hundred megawatts, uh, more or less, and. Um, what I know is that uh, there's an upcoming project of actually solar panels, a huge project here at CERN. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, but the second question, I'm not sure, did we get the second question? No. Can, can, you, can you please repeat the second question? My second question is, uh, is this project powered by the energy gate or not? Yes, it is. 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 Yes, it is
for the moment? Um, one, did anyone get the question? I'm so sorry. Now, now you're regretting that you're asking questions. <laughs> I'm so, sorry. <laughs> I think there is many questions. No, may. I mean, so far, two questions, but we are not getting the second one, unfortunately. Okay. So they're asking, uh, it, is used, it is using clean energy. So uh, as far as I know, uh, plants and sugar, Switzerland are using nuclear power plants to generate energy. Uh, and you know, there is waste from the radiations. So we cannot call it clean energy. It is not using solar energy, but it is not using the water or wind energy. Uh, perhaps, perhaps if you could type in the question in the chat, perhaps that yeah. that could be yes. useful. And meanwhile, exactly. Zach uh, could uh, could show us uh, because Zach has arrived and the exciting stuff are there. So tell us. Exactly. Thank you, uh, uh, May. I think yes, of course, it's better to write the question in the chat because we can hear, uh, of course, the question, but not really well. So here we arrived in minus two, and uh, we are approximately in um, uh, minus than uh, 80, more than 80, uh, 85, 87, approximately 87 meters uh, in underground. You can see here we are in the lift and we are in safe area because why? Because it is safe area, visitors can also be here because we have partitioning of uh, the area. We cannot have gas or smoke can come there. And it's fresh area as well, because we are using also many detectors to um, evaluate like the pressure here uh, inside of the shaft and also inside of the lift. And in case of evacuation, we will all the time use uh, the lift and we will never use the stairs. Of course, here you can see that we have stairs but uh, here, uh, due to the high uh, way and also the long way that we have to use, we need to be supported by uh, also fire brigade uh, because it's uh, 87 meters. It's really long uh, a way that we, we, uh, we, we will use in case if we will use it. Uh, so we need support of firefighters. And also the first thing is to use uh, the lift. So. It's a safe area uh, also because it's closed by, um, uh, by also fire doors. And here we will uh, now see uh, the rest of uh, visitors' paths uh, to show you the shaft of PM54. This is uh, the PM54 shaft. You can see here the light. Uh, we, wa we wanted just to show the light as a, a beams or a protons data as well. Okay, it's data. Uh, so here it's data coming uh, from uh, uh, the, the racks and the sub detectors going on uh, upstairs. And uh, here you can see also uh, the, the stairs uh, that we, we can also take in order just to, to have access to, uh, to upstairs uh, through the PM54. And we are using this shaft during a long shutdown uh, for the maintenance, for also to, to use it uh, in case if we need a, a, like a scissor lift or many, many, many uh, handling uh, operation. And uh, you can see also uh, uh, this shaft, you can see also the minus tree. We can see here from there the minus tree and the big wall. This wall can move from there. And after this wall, we have this, uh, uh, we have the CMS detectors. So uh, now, this, of course, the wall is closed because uh, we are doing uh, uh, operation uh, uh, beam uh, and, uh, and uh, also using this shaft for many, many operations. But we will see afterwards that there is uh, other shaft, uh, which uh, May is now, and this shaft is more using for to, uh, to, uh, to take and to use uh, all yoke during uh, the uh, CMS uh, construction. Here you have an overview of 
all steps of CMS construction, which start here. Uh, we have the first uh, uh, work site here for CMS uh, uh, construction, and uh, it was starting in 2000, uh, 2000 uh, between 2000 and 2001. Uh, and here you can see that uh, the first operation is to um, is to to build all these caverns, uh, and also during the the, the build of caverns, we they found uh, in middle of the the, the shaft for P PX56 they found like a water a presence of water uh, in the middle of uh, of uh, underground. So for to pass this uh, this part which there is a, a big water, they freezed this water in order to us to broke uh, the water after freezing this water and to to accede uh, uh, inside of uh, uh, the the cavern the experimental cavern so they built uh, they did a, a construction of service cavern and experimental cavern so this is a particular uh, facilities because if you see in atlas there is no uh, uh, service cavern and experimental cavern here we are lucky that we can still have an access in underground and you can see here the big operation on the road uh, in france uh, um, uh, the, to pass each uh, uh, each project and component of uh, cms and uh, also here you can see the sx5 which uh, now may uh, and uh, and uh, sara is uh, is on the pix 56 you can see here the big uh, construction of each component and assembling on each component. And Ali, in and fact, actually, Zach, he Ali, just- Ali? Yes. Ali, Ali is with us? Yes. He, he ah, of course. Uh, say hello. <laughs> Mar marhaban, Ali. Marhaban. Ahlan. So uh, Ali, if, if you would like to add something about the construction part of CMS or about the yokes, you can uh, also share your, uh, your knowledge and experience. Uh, well, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, well, thank you, Zach. I don't know what you said earlier, so maybe I will just uh, put some duplicate information. Uh, anyway, we are standing here on the big shaft where uh, the disks were lower than the largest disk was around 2000 tons and uh, was lowered uh, around 100 meters underground with only 10 centimeters of clearance uh, through a very delicate operation. Maybe it's a nice thing to mention. Yeah, and, very uh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. We were looking for fun facts, actually. And perhaps you should tell us uh, where you come from and what you do briefly here at CMS. <laughs> OK, so uh, I am from Bahrain, uh, University of Bahrain. and. Uh, I am working on CO2 uh, systems risk assessment, uh, which are used to cool the CMS detector. I'm also working with Zach in the same team. <laughs> and yeah, um, so yeah, that's a big part of my job. Uh, the other part is to uh, study the installation of this system, the two packel system. Um, I think Zach, since he's underground. Yeah, he's supposed to continue, yeah. but it's just, uh, we wanted Zach on board just to also show you another representation of uh, an Arab country here at CMS. Go, go, you could go on, Zach. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank so, you. So, uh, thank you, Ali. Of course, uh, uh, Ali is doing a, a big job in a, a safety system. We are now just one example working on fire the system here you can see the commissioning of fire the system which is really impressive because there is a foam in all caverns and we are using the safety system in case if there is uh, any problem with the with the detectors uh, of course we we hope that we will never use this uh, uh, this uh, fire the system but uh, here you can see uh, before to to install each yoke uh, each yoke of uh, CMS detectors, we, we did uh, like a commissioning of, uh, of uh, the safety systems. We have many, many safety systems. And also to continue on what he said, uh, uh, Ali, here you can see that the handling operation of each yoke uh, of CMS detector, that's why we uh, he have this name, Compact Muon Solinion, because it's really compacted and because we have many, many 
uh, uh, yolks uh, for uh, on the on the detectors. So so now we know that there is two shaft, one shaft PM54, more for handling operation, uh, more for materials, and we have another shaft which uh, we have uh, presence of May, Ali, and uh, also Sarah. Uh, and this shaft is using uh, only for uh, for uh, the construction of CMS detectors. So now we are going to counting room. So in counting room, we have uh, two counting room, uh, which here is S2. Of course, it's in visitor's pad. But we have another one uh, upstairs, of course. And we have also same racks, uh, also in part of uh, UXC55. Uh, but, but we have a presence of these racks. Uh, what is these racks? Here we have detector safety system is taking uh, many data like uh, uh, water leak uh, sensors or smoke sensors, uh, and also protected by radiation during operation. Uh, operation mode of uh, of uh, works of uh, CMS or LHC as well. So uh, that's why we have USC 55. It's more service caverns in order just to not destroy all uh, 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 optical fiber and all uh, detectors. And here, of course, we can access any times. Uh, Noemi is right, and also you can also do uh, exchange of uh, many uh, electronic cards or uh, also doing many updates on a more computing system. So here you can see, uh, you can just imagine how many uh, meters we have of optical fiber. Uh, it's just uh, uh, impressive. We, we, it's, mo it's also really complex and organized. It's a big word of, uh, of uh, scientists to organize each uh, data and also to follow each data because afterwards uh, we will see that in control room we have a uh, monitoring of each other, what it happened during uh, radiation, what it's happened during a collision or many yeah, things. Uh, I'm sorry to disturb you, but many of our students have classes uh, in 10 minutes. So maybe we can uh, ask some audience if they have some questions. Uh, because people have to leave. I'm sorry. Is it okay? Sorry. Uh, I, I didn't understand anything. Uh, I think, can you, can you hear you understand? me back? Can you hear yes, me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think uh, many students had to go to class. So um, they were asking if uh, they could send their questions um, as long as they are still uh, here. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So we have a question. Uh, Dr. Samha, did you want to ask question? Yes. Hello? Sorry for uh, I just want to uh, ask about what is actually the use of this device and how they are. So what's the importance of knowing this? Yeah, I know. I, I just want to know. My, excuse me, I, my apologies. Could you please? Yeah, thank you. Perhaps we could uh, just uh, read the question here. What is the use of CMS in real life? We always get this question. Perhaps Sally could answer. So there are many uses uh, for uh, CMS. Uh, uh, well, if I will take in general, uh, what we are doing here is to study physics. Uh, we want to know the underlying principles of the universe. Uh, how uh, that, like, what is dark matter uh, uh, and uh, what is, I mean, what is it? And all these kind of, yeah. Mm. Uh, and we want to also to study the standard model and uh, uh, to know, I mean, we know that the standard model doesn't, uh, let's say, satisfy us in terms of uh, uh, predictions. I mean, I am not a physicist, so that's why. <laughs> so anyway, 
Um, we also like we study physics and during our uh, like experiments uh, and uh, uh, we we get like uh, we discover new things. It's not just the physics that we are studying. For example, the World Wide Web uh, was uh, like invented here, and uh, we have yeah we we have also many other technologies that were discovered at CERN. Uh, just in parallel with the experiments, uh, for example, the touch screen and uh, also some of uh, cancer treatments, radiation treatments. So a lot of uh, technologies were invented in parallel when we were studying uh, the physics here at CERN. So it's not just physics, it's also many other things that are uh, beneficial for uh, the yeah, and many technologies that could be used for, especially for, for instance, in hospitals to detect uh, cancer, for, for instance, just like Ali mentioned, uh, using um, and technologies. I can... Hello, May? Yes, and Zach can also uh, add on this. Yes, of course. And I can uh, also add that we are also managing, trying to managing uh, climate change or the effect of uh, natural uh, events. Uh, if you take just earthquake, uh, things to uh, many things that we, we found in, uh, in particle physics, we can use this type of sensors that we specific built for, um, for, uh, for um, atoms and uh, particle physics for to detect in around the world and each part of the planet the earthquake. So this is also one uh, uh, things that we, we also found. Uh, as we can also uh, install yeah. or we can make a line to this uh, point. There is many, many examples that we, I don't have honestly uh, now, but it's one of the also examples that we, we also um, can highlight. Uh, I think I can continue just to show you the rest of uh, uh, USC 55 until to arrive in front of a CMS uh, experiment. Yeah. But we have another question uh, that says, did CMS prove anything related to Big Bang? Perhaps this is uh, this uh, should be answered by Zoltan. <laughs> I don't think we can hear you. Yes. Uh, Zoltan will answer this question, but uh, he wants to connect to the. OK. Okay. All right, I take this one. So the Big Bang, uh, when it happened, when it happened, this created all our physics that we know now. Um, sorry, I have to change the. Yep. Um, what we can do, of, of course, we cannot reach the Big Bang conditions with these uh, uh, accelerators, but we can get very close to them, to some of the tens of thousands or millions of a second after the Big Bang. And these are the conditions that we can test with these detectors that we have. We can have uh, some, uh, uh, some hints, some measurements about what, what makes uh, our universe work now. Actually, obviously, that that conditions had an absolute uh, impact on the universe that we can observe today. Um, there are some, some open questions in the, in the particle physics standard models that we know that the standard model that we, that we learn now at the universities uh, is not the final model. It doesn't give answers on, on why are the, the masses of the particles like what we measure. We measure several orders of magnitudes uh, in the, the masses, starting from the neutrinos that are maximum 0 0.1 electron volt up to the heaviest particle, the top quark, that is uh, 190 or, or, or 70 giga electron volts. So this is several orders of magnitude difference. We don't know why this happens. We also don't know why there are two different types of particles like bosons and fermions. Uh, why is this fundamental difference in the, the, 
the particles uh, that that are some 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 ideas uh, that uh, that try to answer this, like the supersymmetry, where we expect a symmetrical particle set to the one that we can observe today. Uh, all fermions uh, will have a boson pair. All bosons will have a fermion pair. Uh, but this is something also that we want to test if this idea is, is valid. So far, we didn't see any of them. But we, of course, we continue these, uh, these uh, observations and measurements. Um, so in, in nutshell, this is actually what we are talking about is, is several semesters at the university. So, so I, I apologize for trying to, to squeeze it into two or three sentences. Uh, Sultan, uh, um, I would like to mention that it's almost time for our uh, classes for students. So most of them have left. So maybe we can uh, close this event and we can summarize things and let's close up. Um, Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, sure. Perhaps Zach can uh, uh, briefly close up the today's uh, visit. Thank you. Yes. So we will just finish with the uh, uh, another part with uh, the effect of uh, magnetic field and you can hear me mate and the rest yes. of uh, yeah. people okay so now we will just see um, the effect of magnetic field because we are close to cms detectors here you can see that we explained again uh, all the lhc parts and also the beams where is going the beams uh, here just behind the, the camera you can see also the overview of uh, LHC. So I can touch like uh, the, uh, the, 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 the LHC side, but just to be to, it's more for people and visitors to take pictures uh, from there because you cannot be uh, inside of LHC, uh, unfortunately. So here it's more selfie point. And here you can see um, the entrance of uh, UXC55, another entrance, uh, which is also possible. It means uh, we, we called UPX56. And you can see here the panels. It's a supervised area. So we need a dosimeter and trainings and uh, allowed by people. You see here the, uh, the, the guys is trying to go inside to take the key and to have authorization from the control room. So he will do what we did for to to have an access to uh, to PM54, uh, and here we will see together the the most thing which uh, uh, our scientists they love is the effect of magnetic field. We can see that, of course, if there is a gravity, it's uh, doing like this. But here, the effect of magnetic field, I think here, Zoltan, if I'm right, we are in 10 millitesla, something like that. And yeah. inside of detectors, it's 3.8 tesla. So mm. this is the maximum. Uh, and here you can see uh, really the uh, presence of magnetic field also in uh, USC 55. Yeah. So it's just uh, unbelievable. Huh? Wow. Okay. And if you are going, if you just, or here, the magnetic field is not really high, but mm -hmm. if you go in direction of the wall uh, and uh, of the CMS detectors, you can see that the magnetic field is more high. Mm -hmm. Okay. How and thick is the wall, Zach? What? How thick is the wall? Seven, you mean the diameter of the wall? Yep. Seven meters, yes, seven meters. Yep. Another thing that I can also show to, to people is also uh, this kind of uh, effect of magnetic field. Um, and here you can see all uh, metallical parts uh, going on the floor. I think I will take uh, others one. So it's just uh, one of the things that you can see uh, mm -hmm. in live, like yeah. uh, European Space Agency they had seen or NASA. So here at CMS and uh, at CERN, it's like 
what we can see about uh, science. Wow. So, <laughs> and if we, we unfortunately during uh, yet or during long shutdown, uh, yeah. we, there is many, many virtual visits in YouTube that you can see that uh, people was uh, also inside of UXC 55. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Doc. And You're welcome. Everybody has classes now, so we, uh, we, we need to close. Uh, okay. We, yeah. So thank you very much. So and uh, thank you very much. Wasn't thank you for the audience. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.